Hello, my friends. Time for another fantastic Reddit tip. All right, this tip comes to you because I noticed I was working with a client, okay? And they had a huge building. And what they had done is they had drawn lines on their plan to delineate like area A, area B, area C and D and so on. And they had drawn the lines like reference planes so that they could use those lines to line up their views because you want the plan, the floor plan, the dimension plan, and you want the reflected ceiling plan to kind of be cut in the same place for area A to represent it correctly. You don't want it like showing the stair in one and not the stair in another, that kind of stuff. But you want the uh, the furniture plan to also show the same area. And they were just, they had to adjust every single view to where these reference planes were so that they could um, get all their views lined up. And I just said, well, wait, wait, wait. I said, how come you're not using scope boxes? And they're like, I, I don't know. Why don't you show me? So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> using a scope box. But then they, um, they didn't know the difference between a scope box and a section box. They have, two, they have two different uses and they're a little bit confusing. And so what I'm gonna do is show you the difference between scope boxes and section boxes right now. All right, let me share my screen with my friends. There we go, I'm sharing my screen with you guys. And here we go. This is our fantastic little building. <clears throat> and where are we? Okay, let me get my face up here. All right, here is our 3D little building. Now. I want to talk about scope boxes before section boxes. We're going to go to most of the time, friends, scope boxes are to narrow the scope of a floor plan, flat 2D floor plans. They are used, yes, in 3D, but mostly scope boxes are for 2D views, mostly. So I'm going to go to my plan view, okay? And I'm going to, mm -hmm, here's my plan, all right? And let's just say that I make this window a little bit smaller and put it over there. Okay, so look at this. Let's just suppose this building was really big and I needed, I can't even get it on a sheet, right? Because it's such a big building and I need to delineate different areas. Area A, area B, C, D, E. Wow, this building is so huge. Here's how you deal with scope boxes, okay? Up here in on the view tab is the little button called scope box. And I want you to click on it. And what it does, say hey, project, shut up. I don't want to say it right now. When you click on the scope box, it gives you up in the top left here the option to give it a name now, and you can name it later. And it gives you like a height. How tall do you want this scope box to be? And it's mine's defaulting at 40 feet. And I don't know if that is the default that happens in everybody's Revit or if it's just the last, what I use the last. So I don't know. I'm just gonna I'm gonna set mine for 20 feet just for fun to see if it sticks for the second one that I make. Okay. Let's say I want to scope this down to my conference room. So I'm gonna call it conf room, okay? And then all I gotta do is put in my scope box around the conference room. And I just want to give you guys a heads up. The scope box can only be a rectangle. It can't just go y -y 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 wherever, okay? It's a rectangle. Once you draw it, you can pull the little handles. You're not going to find a button up here that says edit the footprint because you can't. It's a rectangle. And so you just get this thing where you want it. And if you look over in the properties, it's going to tell you conference room because that's what we named it. We could edit it right now. 
But you'll notice when I've highlighted it, I don't have an option to edit the height of it. I would have to like cut a section through it or go to an elevation where it's visible and then pull it up and down visibly to where I want to show it. You can't just type in a number any longer, which is kind of weird. Hello, Autodesk, if you're watching, give us the ability to change the height of the scope box in the properties. Mm, just suggesting that. Okay, so I've got a con this around my conference room. So what I can do is this. I am going to, in, in the view, if I have a view that needs to just be focused on this conference room, I can just come over here to my view and you'll notice there is under the uh, category of extents, there it is, scope box, and it's set to none. But I can use this drop down and pick any of the scope boxes that I have. If I had area A, B, C, D, whatever, wing A, wing B, whatever, whatever you've got in your project. Well, I'm gonna say conference room, okay? And watch what happens, boom, it crops down right to this, this exact space right here. And I can, I can um, hide any annotation or turn off any annotation that I don't want to see here. But I want to show you that this scopes down to the area that you want. Okay? And if I put it back to none, okay, then what it does is it allows me to go back and pull... Pull, it gives me these little shape handles so I can put the view back to um, any size that I want, okay? But I don't have control of those shape handles when I use a scope box. Like, let me put a scope box around this toilet room, okay? So I'm just gonna go up here to view, click on scope box, put it on there first. Look, it defaulted to 40 feet. Ah, now we all know it goes to 40 feet, okay? Just saying. So I'm gonna click there and there it is, but this time I'm gonna name it afterwards. So I'm gonna go over here to properties after it's selected. I'm gonna call it toilet, toity, there, toity. Okay, so now I can tell my plan, let's just say, watch this. I'm gonna duplicate the view because I need a toilet room plan. I'm gonna duplicate the view, okay, bam. And then I'm gonna set, the scope box to toilet, toity, Doop. bam. And then you just kind of hide things that you don't, that are outside of that, that you don't want to use. And you can even turn on or off this, um, the cropping region. But I'm telling you, this will crop the, any plan to the exact same extent because it has a box that it's going to. So let's go to the reflected ceiling plan. So if I'm here in the reflected ceiling plan, I can duplicate this because I need a reflected ceiling plan of just that toity, okay? So here I go. I'm gonna duplicate my view. And here in this duplicate view, I'm going to go down to scope box and say, focus, you know, scope down to toity. Bloop. There we go, okay? and then hide what you don't need to see. So this cuts it exactly in the same place with the click of a button so fast. And so I know that it is cutting it right here exactly every single time, okay? That is the proper use of a scope box. You create an area. Now let's just say there's, there's other uses Let's just say you've got two buildings on your pro, um, project. You might call one scope box building A and the other scope box building B so that all your floor plans, like your reflected ceiling plans of building A, your um, first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor, all the floors are gonna crop boom, and cut building B out, zinc, out of all the, of the plans. But, um, and so that they're all just showing A. It just makes it so much easier for you. So you're not dragging your cropping regions, wondering if they're in the same place as they are on other floors. You follow me? Okay. 
Now, so that's scope boxes, and they're very useful for large projects. Very, very useful. They're not too useful at all on small projects because and it's just you can get if you can get the whole project on a sheet, you don't really need a scope box. Okay. It's mostly for these big projects. But let me show you when we go to 3D. When we go to 3D, there is a thing called a section box that we can turn on. Okay. Section box is in the properties. And it's right next to the, the word scope box. So I'm like, well, why don't we just use a scope box? All right, let me just show you. If I say scope box, I can only crop around the two, the scopes that I've got, like the toity. Plunk, and there's my 40 foot tall piece. And look, you cannot edit it yet until if I wanted to, I could tell this to go back to scope box none. And now when I click it, I am now controlling a thing called the section box. But I've told it to not use just the toity because you can't really tell it's a toity because it's 40 feet tall. So I'm going to pull it down. So it's cutting through the second floor and pull it down all the way. There's a first, there's your toity. See, look, it did crop around the toity. That was pretty cool. It, we got a toity crop. Okay, if I tell it this view to crop around the conference room, it's going to give me the 20 foot version. Remember how I set it at 20 feet? But I can't control it until I set it free. I'm going to stop it from cropping. I'm going to say none. And now when I click the section box, yes, I can go taller, I can go shorter. We can actually go in and see the conference room. This is a valuable tool if you wanted to isolate in 3D one of your rooms. But more often than not, I don't use the section box, which is a 3D cropping element. I don't use it for specific spaces. Typically, I'll just cut open like the first floor like this. I'll just cut the first floor open so that my client, there we go, look at that. So the client can see the first floor and go, and I'll just tell them, okay. So, and you can also, you can hide the crop, this crop, so it's not visible. Look, I'll just right click on it and say, hide and view this element, okay? So when I'm showing my client, I'm like, okay, this is your front door when you come in. So you can see this is your lobby and you go upstairs and there's the bathroom and the conference room. You can show them easily. Now, if I need to edit this and show them the second floor, I can do that. Look at this. I can go to reveal hidden elements and one of the objects that is hidden is this guy, okay? The section box. And so what I'll do often is come around to the front view and I'll lift the section box just so it's cutting through the second floor windows, okay? And then I'll stop revealing the hidden elements and you'll notice that now my building is chopped open on the second floor, okay? So I can just tell the client, I can go, okay, when you come upstairs, you come up right here and this is your workspace and there is a storage room and there's a private office. So what, Scope boxes are mostly used for 2D plans to get to focus down on certain specific locations, but more importantly, to be able to repeat the exact same cut for any of the uses like reflected ceiling plans, um, furniture plans, life safety plans, working drawings. So the cut is exactly in the same place for all those different plants. That's your section box. I mean, scope box. The section box is mostly used in 3D just to cut the plan open or even to cut the plan. You can use it to cut the building open and show down inside a little bit. Maybe I'll even go downward, watch this. I will click the section box and go downward with it into the dirt underneath the building. 
So it helps the client to see relationships so that you can help guide them through your building and be able to show them, like I said, relationships of where things are three-dimensionally so that they get a better visual of your building. That's what I use section boxes for. Scope boxes, 2D, section boxes, 3D. All right. I think that's enough talking about those, except for one fun thing. If you're in the, des you're designing and you want to just look at something, just look at it. Would, would you just look at it? Look at something cool. You can click on something. There is a section box tool right there. That's what it looks like, okay? Section box. You can type BX on the keyboard also, but that little tool, you can hit it and it will isolate that object. So I just isolated the stair, okay? It'll isolate it and give you a, it'll close your section box in one foot around that object. I've mentioned this before in another video, but look at this. If I click the floor, and then I say section box, I get the floor, okay? Nice, cuts all my stuff in half. If I click on the toilet, section box, whoop, it gives me one foot around that, that toity. Hey, <clears throat> and if I go window, whoop. When it was on the toilet, it showed me more, but I don't even care to, to deal with that right now. Okay, here's a wall, whoop, shows me the whole wall, loving that. Look at that toilet cut in half. Oh, it's unusable. I think when I go to the toilet, this toilet has got extents that are invisible that give me grab bars and whatnot. That's why it's going so large like this. Um, but I'm gonna click on the floor again. Or look, how about this, this wall? Scoop box, very nice. Ooh, 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 stair, scope box. Boom, very nice, floor. Scope box, <laughs> front wall, scope box. <laughs> so you can jump around when you're designing by using this to, to check things like, ah, curtain wall, scope box. <laughs> now you can check your mullions quickly to make sure everything's cool on the front and back because the section box tool just gets you there super fast. Anyway. I just wanted to show you guys how this thing works. And, and maybe now this helps a little bit working with scope boxes and section boxes and what the differences are and kind of when you would use them. All right. I think that's probably about enough of me jabbering on about these kind of things. If you guys have any questions then put them in the comment section below. Or if you have an idea for a Reddit tip, put it in the comments below. I'll get it. And if it's a decent idea, then if one guy showed me, I mean, asked me once, could you show us how to set up an entire template? And I finally got around to it because it's kind of exhaustive, but I did make a video. If you are looking for a template for your company, I did make a video for that but it came from a comment from one of you guys, all right? So anyways, that's all for now. You guys have a fantastic day. And until we meet again, happy reveting. All right, bye-bye.